what is important is that uh, you must understand your terrain, um, implying human terrain as well. Uh, what makes uh, the world go round? What is happening in the inner circles? And how, how does that influence your, your zone of influence and your zone of concern? And then really to go and sit down and assess that situation, decide where you want to go in terms of uh, the short, medium to long term uh, situation that you, that you wish to create. And that uh, warfare is not always the answer. That it's easy to start a war, but it's not easy to stop a war. And um, that, you must, that you must get pe key people involved, the key role players, the guiding coalition, so to speak. But people who are really serious about creating peace over the long term. And um, to think about the people on the ground who are suffering. Because um, I think it has become necessary for people to be responsible and to take ownership for the suffering of the people on the ground. So military forces really have a role to play in terms of establishing a firm basis for change and uh, to start developing from that. I think the Rattel uh, infantry combat vehicle or armored combat vehicle is probably one of the best examples. Um, you, you need an armored force that uh, does not only possess tactical mobility but strategic mobility as well. Light forces that, that can move far and wide and um, the uh, tactics they employ should be based on uh, maneuver warfare uh, tactics. And one of the big problems in Africa, if we, if we think about Africa as such, are the problems with infrastructure. You don't have infrastructure. So logistics is, is a key issue and a main driver with regards to the sustainment of the forces in the field. It doesn't help if you have a large force and you, you can't sustain them. And when you start fighting, that you uh, cannot sustain that force in the field in terms of maintaining momentum and, and the mobility of that force. Mobility is the key. I believe there was one, um, uh, a, a good example of a long distance raid that was uh, carried out from uh, Central Africa to, uh, to the outskirts of Khartoum. Yeah. I think those are the type of tactics that uh, one should look at when we think about fighting in, fighting in Africa. I think one of the first things that uh, I would like to uh, share with you is the importance of, of intelligence, not only tactical intelligence, but strategic intelligence as well. To me, that is the key driver, to know what is going on, not only on the other side, but on your own side as well, and to assess the situation from that. But be, to be able to preempt, because preemption and disru disruption and dislocation are the, is the key. The, co the combination of that is the key to fighting in Africa. And then to have to be proactive, to have the mobile forces available to do uh, 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 surgical uh, insertions in Africa and to gain the initiative. If you don't have the initiative and freedom of action, you have a serious problem in Africa. And I think one of the main questions that military strategists should be asking themselves uh, when they start developing strategies uh, for war fighting in Africa is who has the initiative? And if you don't have the initiative to really go and sit down and ask, you, ask yourself the question, why not? And to start evolving your strategies around that. Because to be reactive uh, is not the answer. And to continue making war is not the answer either. So if you want to fight, it, it must be with a purpose to create the better form of peace. And one of the ideas that, that I was playing with was to get the chiefs involved and to say, hey, let's sit down. And and create a project that is that captures the imagination. Uh, the first type of project that I would like to see evolve is to go and sit down and determine what the user requirement specification should be for an armored fighting vehicle that is suitable for African conditions and to start evolving a pilot project around something like that.